Oh, right, all right, all right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Florencio Files. He is down here in the bottom right-hand side of this map. He is the cheesiest, strangest, weirdest player who plays competitive games not for the feeling and enjoyment of improving and getting better, but more to ruin his opponent's playing experience. His approach to strategy is if it makes your opponent angry, it's a good strategy. He is, of course, the Sewer Mermaid, Florencio. And his opponent in the top left... Doing a double extractor trick to get a few more drones out. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry, guys. Instant rewind. <laughs> Builds an overlord on time. And he's like, man, I really want to build these two drones. Does an extractor trick. And that allows you to build two more drones over supply. Except... Except that... <laughs> Except it was never oversupply. <laughs> like the overlord popped at like basically the moment they would have got oversupply. So BG is me there with a very fancy uh, misplay, I guess, is what we can call that. It's not the biggest deal, just kind of funny to watch. So a Zerg player up against Florencio's Terran. Of course, Florencio started as a Protoss player. He's delved into the dark arts of the other races. And I think really... His whole style is best seen as like, I want to just counter your army in the most annoying way. I want to do the most annoying harassment. I want to do the most annoying run buys and just, just do things you've never played against before, right? A lot of people in RTS games, we want to get better at the meta. We want to play that the, I do this and you do this and kind of get a feel for the correct counter plays. And there's this whole set of people who really enjoy um, basically just being fuck knuckles. I, I don't really, I, I don't know how else to put it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> they just want to ruin the other player's experience. They just want to. They just want to. They just want to give the other the opponent as many situations that I'll never encounter against another player as possible. And Florencio is a beast at doing that, man. He's so good. So uh, he does build a Reaper first. It's going to be three racks Reaper on one base. Um, will he go Orbital Command Center? Oh my God, he will. It's the new Florencio. More macro focused than ever. It's kind of funny because this is such a committed micro intense opening. For those who don't know, he's really had a rebirth recently as Clemencio. Um, and it's not because he gives clemency to his opponents. No, he tortures them before brutally killing them and their families. No, it's not that sort of clemency. Clem is in Clement, the French player. Uh, Clement Desplanches, whose name I'm probably butchering. Uh, you guys know that. You guys know the theme song. Desplanchito. Um, sung, of course, by our, our favorite Coker and Funker and, um, and Yogo and so on. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, basically Clem lives with him now and has been teaching him how to micro. Ooh, you see that? He pulls the SCVs, surrounds, four lings, four lings, two with the Reaper, two by the SCVs, doesn't lose a single unit. This is what Clem has been teaching him how to micro. Look at this. Look at that focus fire. Move, shoot. Move, shoot. Perfect stutter step target fire from Florencio. Amazing grenade. He put it in front of the queen, but because BG is me is such a noob, they didn't even micro the queen forward. So the only reason that last grenade didn't hit is because his opponent's bad. But this is this is it. For, basically, Clem lives with him. Um, Need moved out. He said that his results had taken a turn for the worse ever since living with Florencio. And a few years in, he, he's realized there may be a connection. But uh, Clem was happy to take his place. Clem said, you know what? Need might be an idiot who, who thinks he can't learn that much, but I think I can learn a lot from Florencio. So I actually did an interview. Unfortunately, we did go into some things we probably weren't meant to talk about. So Clem hasn't allowed me to release it just yet. We're just we're, we're just having a bit of back and forth. Essentially, um, yeah, we, we heard about what it's like to have Florencio as your roommate living with you and um, how it is to be a 7.2K best Terran uh, in Europe, best Terran versus Zerg in the world. And what it's like to teach a guy who um, usually plays with his scrotum on the keyboard rather than his hands. He said there was a few issues with trying to teach Florencio how to kind of press the buttons, um, you know, with that part of his body. But Florencio is keen to learn. He said he puts in the hours of work, um, even if they aren't in the most standard techniques that he wants to learn, he does put in the practice hours. So it's good to see Florencio here. And you see, oh, look at that. Jumps to the high ground, jumps to the low ground, shoots the queen, gets out with seven hit points. And he's gonna, he's gonna circle using waypoints to circle around the back of the base, Clemencio, who by the way is playing one base, three racks by, wait, oh no, he has a command center. He does have another command center, but it's, he's on 20 SCVs, four and a half minutes in the game. And he lets the Reaper go there just to make the Zerg feel better because he felt he was bullying them too well. 
and and he's he's now he's on 20 SCVs at five minutes into the game. So I think Clem is purposely saying focus on micro, don't build workers. It's not as important. And I think it's a conscious it's a conscious decision to have 20 workers. I think that was the same work account he had when he made his orbital command center, guys. I'm. <laughs> That may have been, that may have been three and a half minutes ago. <laughs> Did he not build a single SCV the whole time it was microing everything? He's like, yeah, but I've got three racks bio with stim and shields. I'm like, okay. And he's waiting for the two better backs, which is, as you can see, lining up perfectly. It's first you build the 17 Marines, then you start a Viking. So what can I say, guys? It's um, it's uh, it's a good, it's one Viking, one medevac. It's a good build order. Oh, he's getting all in. The Zerg is doing a 38 drone. Wait, wait, I was about to say hatch tech, but they're making Bane speed as they move across. It's a Roach Bane attack with Bane speed and slow Zergings. What am I looking at right now? Oh my god, what am I looking at? They're not even organizing. They're they're just a moving in a few units at a time. Oh my god. Like, I like to announce to my opponent. Oh my god, he even clicks on the command center with the pain link. Oh my god, Florencio lets him inside. Pro micro, pro micro, pro focus fire. <laughs> he actually manages to evade most of the pain links there. Oh, he's got a planetary. He's got the planetary up. He's okay. He's okay, guys. The Zerg's still building Ling Bane against Florencio as a planetary. The Zerg has a fourth hatch, which is a big problem for Flo. Their macro is way better than his, and they know how to spread creep tumors. These are all big problems for Florencio, guys. He doesn't usually do well against places. Does the Zerg not realize they don't have Ling speed? Does this, like, this, it's the most important upgrade in the game. But he's like, no, I'm not playing Bane. I'm not playing Zerglings. I'm playing Roach Baneling. You're not going to get Roach Speed either? They're the most important upgrades in the game! Oh, people in chat are telling me that, that Clement is meant to be pronounced Clement. I think that's it, how you say it if, if you're French, though. Like, if you actually want to pronounce names. But uh, we do a thing called bastardizing in the English, where we basically take a name, even though it's a name, not a word, and we say it wrong because it's easier for us to say, and that's how we spell it. So I don't know. I've never, to be fair, I've never actually met a uh, no, no, like Clement from um fucking uh, the flight of the Concords. We call him Clement. I'm pretty sure as well. Uh, <laughs> people in the comments can let me know. I, I I always called him Clement. I'm pretty sure it's only Clement. If you want to be like Bogut, uh -huh, croissant. Everyone knows it's a croissant. Fucking don't at me, okay? Nice marine. Oh, high ground, low ground. High ground, low ground, that's a classic Clem maneuver. Oh, he's he's diddling. He's diddling this Zerg, man. He's like, I'm I'm, there, I'm up there. Now I'm down here. Oh, where'd I go, little Zerg player? I'm back up here in your main base. <laughs> this is exactly what happened in the last episode. Against Boob, high ground, low ground, high ground, low ground. This is his new favorite maneuver, isn't it? Ow, 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 okay. Does lose two Marines there, but he gets the Roach Warren. Roach, Roach speed gets denied. He's got amazing macro behind it. As you can see, 35 SCVs. Honestly, these Marines are actually getting insane value. Oh, sorry. Did you think I was on the low ground? Guess what? I'm over here now. Oh my God. He actually, like, honestly, Florencio? Yeah. I think Florencio, if I had to characterize Florencio's playstyle as a unit interaction in StarCraft, Florencio is um, a cyclone and his opponent's an ultralisk. Like, they might look more powerful than him at some points in the game, but he literally just locks on and then just basically runs away and just keeps slapping them in the face every day. And is like, hey, dumbass, hey, dumbass. Why? And he just keeps like cuffing them over the ear and then running away. And he just runs around them in circles. He just keeps cuffing them. Why is there a slow zergling drone counterattack? What is this? Oh my God. Okay, that is it. He. Florencio realized if he keeps going up to the high ground, the low ground over and over, his opponent's brain will break. And his opponent's broken. You know when your opponent runs 20 slow zergings, two drones into your planetary? They're done. Mentally tapped out. He's like, duh, that drop was really annoying. I'm going to build. What the fuck am I looking 
at? Did he just put down three spires and four spore crawlers? He's like, well, this is where he kept dropping. You know, he can just drop anywhere else, right? He's like, yeah, but that's where he did it before. You're not going to spread them across the bases? He's like, I've got one here. It's fine. What if he just drops over here? Holy shit. Florencio is truly at the MMR where he is playing players of his brain tier. This is insane science from his opponent. And he flies into it? No, he doesn't fly into it. Oh, he does. He does. He does. He kind of goes into it. How do you still not have Zergling speed? What am I looking at right now? <laughs> This is better than Maru vs. Rogue. This is honestly the... This is flying his medevacs into the spores. He's engaging into it. The Zerg put all their static in one spot and Florencio's bleeding units into it. I was like, he could just go anywhere else. Florencio's like, I could go anywhere else. And I'm like, yep, I know. So yeah, we're, we're, you'd attack natural, third, fourth base. Florencio's like, nah, uh, uh And I'm like, oh, where are you going to go? And he's like, into the static. I'm like, but it's static defense. He's like, yeah. And that's why I'm going to attack into it, because it's defense, and I like attacking. And I'm like, that makes no fucking sense. This is some science bullshit that you teach in your stupid pyramid scheme of a university. It's dumb, it's fake, and I'm not buying into your bullshit anymore, Florencio. What is this? Triple battle cruiser after dropping with marines. I literally won a game in a tournament today doing this, so I can't even hate on it. <laughs> it's one of the stupider cheeses out there. But you could do it. He really does need to put on gas on his natural. He's got a planetary weapon instead. It is one of the dumber cheeses you can do, but that's exactly why it can work. Because if you keep him busy with marines, they're busy building banelings. They're worried about that. Um, I still can't get over the triples. There's literally no reason to make... No, wait, wait. There's one reason. If you want to make two upgrades and a greater spire, but you need a hive to make the greater spire. <laughs> it's, it's the only way you could utilize a third spire. It is the only way. Oh, my lord. Fourth command center goes down. This Zerg player is like, hmm, the path to victory. Oh, he's going 1-1 one, one Corruptors. Does he know about the BCs? He does not. But I think it's just the, the drops have triggered the Zerg enough. So they're actually building the counter to the battle cruisers. They just don't have much gas. They've got two gases mining, four gases. Mm, if they pump Corruptors off four gas, they'll actually be able to catch up because Flo's still not mining gases himself. And he's not teleporting across. If they hold down the Corruptor Key, they could do it. They are supply blocked right now, though. BG is me. Bad game is me. Banelings going for four Marines. Okay, okay. He's going to roll on it. That's not enough Banelings to kill a planetary, is it? It's, it's not repaired. He puts a barracks down. Age of Empires. Florencio. Oh, wow. Okay, that actually was some good damage. Damn. Oh, damn. Okay, so some nice damage taking out the natural there. A bunch of SCVs there. 11 workers go down, make it 12. It's going to clear those gases. Battlecruisers, though, there's still no defense for the battlecruisers. There's seven queens, two corruptors. Uh, and right now, the Zerg is... What are they doing? Making four baitlings here? What is the Zerg player doing? <laughs> He's going to come down and clean it up with his marines. Wait, wait. The baitlings are going to kill every marine, aren't they? Watch this, watch this, watch this. This is going to be great. Oh, Clem. Clem, come, 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 Clem. Nice status up. Not bad, not bad. Uh, oh, my... Um, okay, battle cruisers are gonna go in. Two two corruptors here, six more on the way. Oh, three battle cruisers are gonna fly on in. Takes out the queen, the drones, the corruptor there. He's gonna pull away. He's got Yamato. The drones aren't running away. He's just sitting under it. He's like taking it. Oh wow, 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 wow. Oh, you know what? With transfusers, he could fight this. Oh, oh my god, he kills like 20 drones. Uh Yamato some BCs and teleports out. Now the Zerg could easily recover from that because they have so many hatcheries, right? But they're not really injecting or spreading creep or anything. And it is that point in the game, right? Where if the Zerg just goes and builds like five bases, they should be completely fine. But remember that at this point, let's go to let's go to BG is me. Bad game is me vision. Ling speed starts up 14 minutes in and 2-2 two -two air upgrades. So they're gonna have the sickest corruptors. They'll beat the shit out of the BCs. Thing is, you need enough of them that they don't all just die to Yamato. Right now, there's seven Corruptors versus six species, which means every single one, except for well, every, all but one, can get yamato So all, all BG needs to do is hold the drone key down. Remember at this point, though, um, BG is suffering a severe case of Florencioitis. Um, basically, it, it shares a lot in common with uh, a severe digestive tract infection, except in your brain. 
So essentially what happens is fecal particles um, have basically been transmitted just through the engagements in the game, the contact with Florencio. They're now in your brain and it starts to get inflamed. Uh, usually there can be lesions developing, small localized hemorrhaging, aka so bleeding in the brain, right? Um, so once you get to minute 14 or 15 minute in a Florencio game, usually you've got pretty severe, it's kind of like the same sort of symptoms you'd have with pretty severe encephali uh, encephalitis, is that the word? Encephalitis? I think that's it. So he's going to try and go for it. There's not enough corruptors though. The Banelings clear the Marines, but oh my god, he's just going to Yamato every single one. He just, he used battle, he just used blink, he just used it as blink. He just used his tactical jump as a fucking blink to pull a weak battle cruiser back half the screen. He's such a friggin' troll! Oh my lord. Okay, battle cruisers are in. He's trying to build spores underneath seven battle cruisers. I'm not sure if that's advisable, guys. Uh, queens are coming in one of them. Eight corruptors will pop. They have such better upgrades. If plus two carapace could kick in, the battle cruiser's anti air gun does five damage, and the corruptors are gonna have four armor in a moment, guys. Look at how little damage they're taking from the battle cruisers. That's with six battle cruisers all shooting one corruptor, and they're taking so little. But without plus, I mean, plus two would be massive though. Oh, if, if he could just get plus two armor, there's so many drones going down. Florencio's economy sucks, remember. And he does beat that back. There's still a chance here for the Zerg. Uh, just remember, Florencio has not been holding down the SCV key at all. And he, he almost, he lost a lot, bunch of SCVs there. He's got no orbitals up here. Half of his SCVs aren't mining. Remember, Florencio doesn't know what the idle worker button does. And he's completely out of minerals. So Florencio is actually broke right now. And... This gives so much time for the Zerg to recover. So the Zerg is going to transfer workers, put back on gas, take the third, take... Yes! They're building three hatcheries, is what I said! That's all you need to do against Flow. Just retake your bases. And as long as you have like 15 Corruptors to deal with the next wave, you might be able to beat it because you've got two, two upgrades. So like I said, the battle cruisers are going to do one damage a shot. Now, granted, they shoot seven... Seven times six... Six, I think six times 50. Yeah, about, they shoot six times a second. So each battle cruiser will be doing six damage a second to a corruptor, which has 200 hit points. It's going to take the battle cruisers. The Yamato will clear a lot of the corruptors. But dude, the lack of upgrades means that these four armor corruptors are going to laugh at the regular attack of the battle cruisers. And this is it. For those who don't know, Florencio refuses to make upgrades. He says, unless I have a very specific reason, I won't make upgrades. There's no reason to. He's like, I need there to be a specific reason. I don't just make upgrades just because. And I'm like, but they make your things shoot better and have more armor. And Florencia will always be like, oh, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, who cares? Like, and I'm like, what? It doesn't, you can't even have this discussion with him, guys. It's like arguing with your uncle Joe about how immigrants aren't actually the devil and how uh, smoking weed won't actually make you jump out of a fucking window and ruin your life. Uh, it's, it's, it, 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 it's that sort of conversation. It's all oh, the corruptors are coming. He's got 12 corruptors, but he, he runs forward, lets him Yamato them, and then runs. No, that's the whole way you engage is you've got to en engage the battle cruisers, and then when Yamato's down, you kill them. Why would you run forward and fight that if you didn't have enough corruptors? BG is me. Just keep making corruptors and go. You can do. You can do it. even now with eight corruptors. I'd probably fight just because of the upgrade differential. I think there's only one Yamato left in there, guys. Uh, honestly, you've got a few more corruptors popping out. I think you can actually wipe this army potentially, and then you got to chase it across the map, and you have to kill it on his side of the map because he's going to teleport home when he gets in trouble. Well, he might. He's Florencio. You never know. Yeah, there we go. See, look, he sees the corruptors, teleports home. Oh, but he, now he's into widow mines. So the widow mines are going to defend them from the airplay. So Florencio is like. <laughs> Look at that unit's lost tab. He's like, yep, killed 16 corruptors. Haven't lost a battle cruiser yet. Mm. And you know he's just groaning. He's just stroking his ego a little bit. Unfortunately for him, a few of his drones are having a little bit of a workers meeting. Uh, that's not allowed, mate. Get back to work, you little shits. And that, that unit's lost tab. 292 Zerg units for 108 Terran units. Most of which were Marines and SCVs. 58 drones have gone down in this game. Woo wee! <laughs> For those who don't know, battle cruisers have one of the highest armors in the game, and they shoot one of the fastest of any units in the game. And because of that, battle cruisers benefit kind of the most from upgrades out of most units, right? Um, especially the attack is huge. But uh, Florencio is like, no, 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 no. And oh, he's making. Oh, do you know what this means? Okay. If, I don't know if any of you know what this means. Florencio swapped a Starfort onto the Tech Lab. 
He is going to load Widow of Irons into Metavax. When the fight happens, he's going to try and boost the Metavax over the enemy Corruptors, unload the Widow of Irons as he goes, burrow them, and bring the Widow of Irons on top of the opponent's army that way. This is going to be sick. <laughs> Honestly, I doubt he pulls it off. Um, it, I like the attempt. There is This is actually a legitimate way of dealing with Broodlord sometimes, is um, when you don't have a proper anti-air response with Bio, is as the fight starts, you come in from the side with like three or four Metavax filled with Widow Mines. You just and you just drill drill these widow mines into the ground so look at that he's following the battle cruisers right now he's looking for it oh my god so he's got 10 battle cruisers he's got 69 scvs which everyone knows from science school uh chapter three of his book on uh, scientific macro abilities is that is the magic number of scvs to stop at the zergs up to 93 so if the zerg just builds enough corruptors they can absolutely win because he just doesn't have a transition as long as the corruptors don't mega clump up right Ooh, they might waste on a drone. Nope. Okay, one of them does shoot on a muter, not the best. Okay, you just got to not... I mean, right now, the numbers are still a bit too close because you're only going to have seven Corruptors left after Yamato goes down. The Zerg is massing spores rather than Corruptors right now. Oh my god. Oh my god. BG, what are you... Ow! BG, pay attention, bro. Okay, he's got mass spores. They help. They're not the most amazing, though. If the BC is overcommitted to it, it'll be good. But look, he's going to try and bait so that the BCs come forward. He uses Yamato on the extractor and the spores. The corruptors are the threat. The corruptors are the threat, mate. Oh, a big widow mine splashy all over the corruptors. There's 11 more where that came from, though. The Zerg has a big enough economy. Does he? The Wait, he runs in with two BCs. They end up teleporting home, being on low hit points. Oh, he's lost all of his fresh bases. He's got a lot of workers, but he doesn't have much to do with them. Oh my, and you know, you could just, what you can do here is you can grab like four or five Corruptors, fly them through in the front, and drag the Widow Mines into the Battle Cruisers, and bring everything in just a little bit behind it. So that would actually be the best way for BG to engage, is you just fly four or five Corruptors right through, drag all the Widow Mines into the Battle Cruisers, and then the rest of your Corruptors can fight. But they're so clumped right now. Oh, the Broodlings! The Broodlings actually took a few Widow Mine shots. That was pretty nicely done. I don't know if it was just an accident or not, but the Battle Cruisers teleport home. The, the Widow Mine's going to try and boost home as well. The other Widow Mine's just going to hang out over there. And BG is me. Uh, it's kind of just chilling right now. Lots of turrets up on Flo's side of the map. He's going to swap into Hellions. <laughs> He's like, damn, man. It's really hard to beat a person massing Corruptor Spore with BCs. But, uh, Bernie cars? Yeah, we'll make some cars with flamethrowers trapped on top. Why the fuck not, man? I swear this is some, um... This is some Mad Max shit, really. I'm like, yeah, it's a June buggy with a flamethrower on top. You're like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, no, it's, it's cool, man. It's super good idea. You're like, I, I guess. I don't know if I'd want to drive one of those if I was a Terran. They're like, no, nah, it's fine, man. It's like, a, it's got an infernal pre-igniter for its infernal flamethrower. Like, come on, man. Guess that sounds cool. 12 battle cruisers out, 27 corruptors at this point. Our Zerg player is spreading Zerglings all over the map. Oh, is he, he's got Burrow. Be super cool if he burrowed Zerglings to block the bases, right? Planetary says no. Nah, mate. Guys, do, do Zerg players have brains? He's. Oh, I guess they're, they're pretty good versus actually the Widow Mines, I guess. But otherwise, I'm like, hasn't he only seen Mass BC and a couple of Widow Mines? I'm like, Mass Bane? Like, it's, it's, this seems questionable. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Corruptors are really good. The Banelings actually will defend the Hellions. Oh, but what if the Hellions bait? What if the Hellions bait? Does he see the Banelings? Florencio doesn't see the Banelings. They were hidden under the Corruptors. <laughs> oh my god, he loses almost all of his Hellions. Just clumped up. BG, pull back. Pull back. BCs are going to run in down there as well. Oh my god, Florencio's like, hey. Hey, guys. Guys, come over. Come come over. Come over here. We got, we got a cool thing to show you. Guys. Guys. Hey, Banelings, come, come, come over, come, come, come over, come over, no, I've got something cool to show you, trust me, it's in my van. The Banelings are like, let's remember, Banelings are born by the Zerg, they were divine, decide, they, they would, oh, he does the juke, he just teleports to the other side, he just teleports to the other side, we'll, we'll give you guys the anatomy of the Baneling in a moment, um, for now, Mass Yamato kills the hatchery and he's like, la 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 la, oh my god, he, he's like, guys, no, 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 seriously, get in my van, trust me. I've got a cool toy. It's uh, it's a Buzz Lightyear toy. It's really fucking cool. Come and get in my van over here. BG's like, a Buzz Lightyear toy? Really? Oh, where is it? Oh, oh. <laughs> Fuck me. 
He just lost like 15 corruptors. And the rest are deep in the orange and red. Oh my god. Oh, Jesus. Um, as I was saying, Banelings, of course, a suicide unit designed by Abatha do not care. They're, they're not the brightest, right? Because otherwise they'd question. They'd be like, what is my goal in life? You know, and you'd be like, oh, it's to kill yourself with acid and kill the enemies at the same time. And it'd be like, that's fucked up. You know, instead, Banelings like, roly poly, ro ro roly poly, bum 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 bum, roly poly. That's literally every Baneling's thought process at all times. So when a Hellion or a Reaper or something is like, hey, come get in my van, they're like, oh? They're like just hanging out, playing in the Zerg yard. And Terrence is like, nah, come over here, come fucking, there's some candy in my fucking van, come check it out. They will very consistent, unless you're there going, no Banelings, no, they will chase into some fucking uh, questionable scenarios. Uh, yes, yes, the unmarked van with a seedy, middle-aged white man with shoulder-length greasy hair in it. The version of that in StarCraft is a pack of widow mines burrowed that the Terran tries to bait you into. It's, it's basically the same thing. Yeah. Um, for those of you who don't play StarCraft, you, you might be a little confused, but, you know, it, it is what it is. And trust me, these are true science facts. This will only improve your understanding of this game. He's like, damn, man, it's really hard to finish this Zerg. I keep killing bases and teleporting away, but I can't win. How do I win? He's like, well, clearly, I just need to go ghosts. That's, that's it. And remember, guys, Florencio actually can't win the game. If he does attack with his battle cruisers, he gets wiped by those two two p uh, two 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 corruptors. If he had upgrades, sure, he could take that fight. Without upgrades, hell's no. Oh, he almost keeps it alive, but he was a bit too slow to repair. Ooh, roly poly, roly poly. I want to roly poly on the SCV. Um, yeah, banelings are really, really not. They're they're yeah, single digit IQ. Anyways, Battlecruisers in the top, hanging out. 16 BCs, there are 31 Corruptors still out for the Zerg. You can see the Zerg's doing a great job of rebuilding the economy. And when I say rebuilding the economy, I believe there may actually be a Baneling behind the keyboard and mouse, because their solution to mass Battlecruiser and losing their bases seems to be roly-poly, a roly-poly, gonna move my corruptor -y. Oh my god, he's actually just killed like six Battlecruisers. Seven? Eight? Oh my lord! He just killed six battle cruisers, and Baylings are gonna kill every SCV on that base. <laughs> oh, red CEO. Oh, I mean, he could just land that base, and he's probably fine. He's still got 40 SCVs. The Zerg has not really been rebuilding their economy very quickly. They're now gonna try and take these bases. They've got to get all these these drones transferred over to start long distance mining them ahead of time. And there is still a chance here, but he's gonna need some Banelings, I think, to clear the Widow Mines, and then. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Don't go there. Don't go there. Okay, I think he wants to pee. Oh, and you know what, guys? Tactical jump is actually used up on almost all of these BCs. Oh, this is a good fight for the Corruptors. The first good fight they've had in a long time. But the, the Thors scare them away, man. And look, he teleports two BCs across to try and pull the Zerg away. He's like, shit, man. Most of these can't teleport, but we can probably lure him away. The battle cruisers. they need to pull back. They need to pull back. Oh my god, he's doing so much damage though. BCs find the queens out in the open, and the BCs are going to start damaging them. There are some spores though. That upgrades, it will be hard to take those out. He's going to double Yamato the hatchery and try to click it down. Ooh, the Corruptors are almost here. I think the Corruptors saved that. Yeah, I think if they were they were had some attack upgrades, they'd probably kill that, but not like that. Uh-uh. And Florencio, he's up on mass Thor now. Remember, these Thors also have no upgrades. So they do get the shit kicked out of them by well-upgraded ground units. Unfortunately, BG is me has no upgrades on their ground units at all right now. And uh, and that is that. Widow mines all over the shop. Still so no, no, no ghost production, which makes me kind of sad. I really want to see nukes. I feel like nukes are one of his, his favorite things to do. He's now going to... Oh, holy shit. He's now running around throwing candy closer and closer to the children. He's literally pulled the van up onto... The grassy strip out front of the house. Oh no. Ah, poor little Jimmy. Ow, oh, he didn't ask for any of this. There's 28 Corruptors out of the map. They're not too far away. BC's gonna take out a hatch again. The Corruptors are coming. The BC's are like, oh, hello. Do you guys want to get in my van? I got some tasty candy. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> oh, it hurts. Um, Zerg still has not made an Overseer and like thought about clearing up these widow mines guys 
This is peak Starcraft, right? This is really... Oh! It's the classic Florencio Thor run by. He does a Battlecruiser Widowmine attack on the north, and then he attacks in the south at the same time. I mean, this is a moment we need. We need Kolaris. Hitting from the north. Hitting from the south. Hitting from the north and south. I agree, Kolaris. He is hitting in the north and the south. Again? Again? The same Widow Mines? Oh my god. I mean, this just shows the amount of trauma. Like I said, guys, BG is me is suffering like hallucinations, fevers, can't think straight. There is swelling on the brain caused by that infection. Sewer-itis, man. That's what I'm talking about. You come into close contact with Ferencio, and for some reason... The more that shit in his brain there is, I think it seems to make him thrive. Like, he has found a way to thrive in that state of permanent contamination. But for other people, for, for normies like BG is me, you can tell this is making BG is me play worse. They're struggling. They keep losing their hatcheries. They can't defend it. They're literally, like, when was the last time they made a play in this game? They've got 173 average APM. But, like, they're just, they're just reeling, right? They're just waiting for the next time Florencio flies in. You martyr some shit and then lose your Twitter minds and teleports away. It, it literally, he's just, he's, like I said, it's that same analogy. It's the cyclone running around in circles. The ultra is like, get back here. And the cyclone's like, yeah, no, you fucking idiot. No, you fucking idiot. Look, once again, does he fly back to the Widow Mines? He's going to try, but I think he's a bit too far. Oh, the corruptors don't even. Look, they're so, they're so convinced they're not going to get it. They don't even chase him. No, not again. Ow. Ow. <laughs> 44 corruptors for 10 pcs ow flow is maxed out with 5k 3k and guys witness remember he cannot finish the he actually can this game with the thors the number of times i have seen him attack with thors at this point and get surrounded by three three ultras and just like lose them in the most one-sided fight you've ever seen against ultraling even zerglings you get three three cracklings versus no armor upgrade thors oh my god the Thors just get absolutely ravaged. Oh, these drones. Are they going to go through? Uh-oh. I think that's going to maybe fire. Nah, I won't get a chance to. Baneling's going to roll in. Florencio now going to go for a double Thor drop. Because remember, guys, he likes torturing his, his victims. I honestly feel like at some point, people forget they can leave the game against Florencio. It's that moment where I'm like, dude. Dude, like, you know you have a get out of jail. Like, like you're not his prisoner. Like, you can leave the dungeon. Florencio right now is there looking in the mirror, and he's like, Oh, yeah. I'd Yamato myself. Oh, I'm hot. <laughs> and then he's fucking, like, shouting. He's like, BG is me. Rubs the lotion in its skin. It rubs the lotion in its skin, or it gets the hose again. And you're like, Jesus Christ. BG is me. Stop this torture. Stop this torture, please. Please. Put Just leave. Just leave. Please. <laughs> Why are you still here? Mauricio is just there, full fucking mast right now. Loving it. He's like, yeah, I'm going to drop a mule to repair me Thors. This is how a Starcraft. This is how a Starcraft. My name is Florencio. This is how a Starcraft. Ah, oh, and I am actually casting this episode live, so I'm very happy to welcome the viewers from our Tosis stream over here. And I want to say it's, it's perfect timing because... We are watching Florencio, who is the perfect example of someone who does not want to get better at StarCraft and just wants to ruin his opponent's day on the ladder. And honestly, I really feel like at this point, BG is me is not leaving the game purely because they are in a state of heightened rage and arousal. I mean, there, there's no way they're enjoying just playing it out and seeing what they can do to make, make it happen. There's no way at all. You know, at this point, and they have lost. 45 Corruptors, almost exclusively to Yamato and Widow Mine, right? They are on Struggle Street right now. BG is me is just here rocking back and forth going, eh, fucking, fucking stupid, fucking, fucking stupid, fucking stupid. And now Nuke's coming in. Oh, let me guess. He's going to fly through the Widow Mines again. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 are we joking on this? Are we actually joking on this right here? Do you That's... actually see this? I do see this, BG is me. I do see this. I see this. I did, uh... Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
Uh, uh, I hope you guys are just as haven't had a good time watching Florencio torture his victim. That's a 28 kill battle cruiser. Ha ha ha. The units lost have 23,000 to 50,000. And I think we yet again have just managed to reduce the StarCraft player population by one more person who just clicked on install. Thank you very much, Florencio. You're a fucking psychopath. Thank you, everybody who's supporting Patreon. Links down below. Max and Apollo God, Colonel SC, and Modern Totem especially. Catch you guys in the next episode. Goodbye and good night.